Hello everyone and welcome, welcome to another story time brought to you by ABC Read. My name is Miss Sasha and ABC Read is the nonprofit organization that I founded and our mission is to develop and nurture, nurture a culture of literacy in black and underserved communities. Woo. All right, I gotta get my words together, right y'all? Hey y'all, what's going on? And in one of the ways in which we do this is by giving away books like this to our youth and we give away books for adults as well. And we make sure that we get books that majority represent black people, black culture, black experiences. You know what I'm saying? This is what we do unapologetically, y'all. Now I'm about to get into it right here. J.D. and the Great Barber Battle, written by Jay Dillard, illustrated by Akeem S. Roberts. Who's the best barber in town? Who is the main character? J.D. Where does the story take place? Meridian, Mississippi. And what has been the problem? The problem is that originally he had an issue with his haircut. He figured out that he can cut hair, tested it on his younger brother, Justin, cut his hair first. Then he cut his own hair, hair looking fly, just like how you see right here on the cover. Now everybody want that clipper work from JD. So you already know, you've been keeping up. He about that business life, okay? He about making them dollars, y'all. Making them dollars, okay? Cutting hair. So now let's get on to into it, okay? Chapter nine, the start of a business. Jordan's Chicago Bulls design got a lot of attention at school on Monday. Oh, man. Did your brother do that? Xavier asked. Nope. J.D. did, he said, throwing me a solid. I only paid $3. He's open on Saturdays. Hmm, more money. Two clients times $3 each was $6. The newest Spider-Man comic cost $4.99. I just had to keep up with Jordan, Xavier, and Jessica. Me and Jordan were super into the graphics, but Xavier and Jessica had all the storylines memorized. Six dollars would even leave me with one extra dollar for candy. One dollar divided by 10 cents was 10. I could buy 10 pieces of candy with my extra dollar. When Eddie, the quarterback on my peewee football team, saw Jordan's designs at lunch, he said he wanted his hair cut by me too. He always went to heart and son. I'm tired of waiting all day when I go, he complained. It didn't take long before I had a lot of clients. All the kids I played sports with and all the regular neighborhood kids wanted that fire I had with my clippers. That very weekend, I set up my shop. It was really warm one day, like most days in Mississippi. So I put out a folding chair on the back porch. The rest of the time, I cut hair in my bedroom. I didn't have the kind of equipment you'll find at Henry's, so I improvised. I put a piece of toilet paper around my client's necks and an old bed sheet over their clothes to keep the hair off. The sheet kept slipping, so I attached a hanger clip on the back to keep it in place. Justin was my assistant barber. He swept up hair, collected money, and sometimes served as my hair model. My mom and sister barely seemed to notice my growing empire. The only complaint I heard was from my grandparents, who told all of us to stop using so much toilet paper. They knew I was cutting hair at home but they didn't want me to cost them money while I was doing it. Do you think toilet paper is free? My grandmother said. I couldn't worry about toilet paper. My mind was busy counting money. If I did 10 haircuts a day, that equaled $30. 10 haircuts times $3 equals $30. I imagine what I'd buy with all that cash my own video game console, a television set, and all the candy I could eat. Soon I would have every Marvel comic, except the Captain America ones. I didn't like those. My bedroom would be the most tricked out kids barbershop ever. Pee Wee football practice was always during the week. So I had all day Saturday to cut hair. One day after I closed up shop, 
Me and Xavier, Jordan, and Eddie were in my room talking about everything from the newest videos on House of Highlights to what plays Coach Sidney had tried to teach us for next week. Yes, next week I'm going to stop pitching it to the running back so much, Coach said, and I can practice some quarterback sneaks. This is what Eddie said. Why don't you throw a ball to me more, Xavier asked. Because Jessica is a better wide receiver, <laughs> Eddie laughed. Mom was out with Vanessa at her track meet. Grandma was at the studio center teaching a kid ceramics class. The only one home was Granddad, who was practicing piano before he headed out to sell burial insurance. He'd leave as soon as Grandma and Mom got back home. I could hear Vanessa and Mom burst through the door, and then I heard an extra voice. It was Jessica. She must have come home with Vanessa today. I have to help my mom bring in the laundry, I heard Vanessa say. Just wait for me inside a few minutes, she told Jessica. I heard footsteps down the hall and saw a shadow approaching my doorframe. That's when Jessica appeared in her warm-up suit. What are you all doing in here, she asked. This is my barbershop, I said. It's where I've been cutting all those guys' hair. Yeah, Jessica, no girls allowed, Xavier said. I turned to Xavier and gave him a look. No, Xavier, Jessica can be here, I said. It's my room anyway. Jessica jogged in and looked at my barber station. Can I sit in your chair? Jessica asked. Sure. I turned to Eddie and said, get up, Eddie. Eddie looked annoyed. You're not done with my edge up, JD. I never saw a girl at Henry Jr.'s place. Maybe I should go back there, Eddie said. I had to let Eddie know that this was my shop. Well, this isn't heart and son, I said. I make the rules. Eddie got up and Jessica sat down. Sometimes I wish I could cut bangs, but my mom won't let me, she said, pulling at a strand of her hair and fake cutting it with her fingers. I bet I could do it, I said. But your mom might get mad, so why don't you ask her first and come back next week? Jessica grinned the way she did when she caught the ball on a crossing route broke a couple of tackles, and was off to the end zone. The sideline, the coaches, and the crowd always screamed extra loud when she scored. That's not a bad idea, she said. Jessica stood up and got out of the chair and looked at all of us. I've got to go, but I'll see you all on the field. We heard Jessica walk down the hall. When she reached the end of it, she yelled back, I'm so fast, <laughs> they won't be able to catch me. Jordan, Eddie, and Xavier all groaned, but I laughed. Jessica could teach all of us about throwing shade. <laughs> oh, man. I told y'all, man, this book right here, I am just like so feeling this book. I love it. I mean, can't y'all just imagine JD, Jessica, Xavier, Eddie, and just picture them and, you know, having their dialogue and talking with each other, cracking on each other and laughing together, all of that good stuff. I love reading books like that when you really can Im uh, put an image in your mind of the characters and, you know, how they're all relating to each other. That's a sign to me of a good book. So, again, I hope that you all enjoyed that chapter and make some predictions about what's going to happen in chapter 10, all right? As we see, JD, he is rocking it with the Clippers. And now Jessica, she like, I'm about to ask my mom if, if JD can cut my bangs. I mean, this is just fabulous. I love it. But I want y'all to think about something. Remember this, heart and son, the barbershop, the only one in Meridian, Mississippi. This is JD's competition. I wonder how that's going to play out in the rest of this book. All right. So you guys remember, catch up on these chapters. If you haven't listened to the first eight, please do that. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share my videos. All right. On Reading is Freedom, as well as our ABC Read channel. And make sure that you please keep reading for at least 30 minutes a day. Take care. Peace.